If you and I know the way, why aren't we guiding people the way, the truth, and the way that they can have life and have it in abundance? Are we attracted to Jesus because of what and who he is? Accomplished to draw man back into ourselves, to draw them out of the hands of the enemy, to bring them back to your glory. Is there any other way? To make sure that we don't take it in an unworthy manner. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a couple of hours to repent. <laughs> okay? Let me know when you're done repenting and then I'll, I'll be back. Let's just go to the Lord right now and just if you have any unconfessed sin within you, we, don't, we want to take communion worthy. Okay? We don't want there to be nothing within us. If it's forgiveness, whatever it may be, let's release it to the Lord right now. Amen. Amen. On that night when Jesus took and broke bread with his disciples, he took the bread and said, this is my body that's going to be broken for you. For you and I. So at this time, let's take the bread. And then in the same manner, he took the wine and he said, this is my blood that has been given up for you. As often as you drink of it, drink it in remembrance of me. So right now we're remembering our Lord. Go ahead and drink. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we just thank you for your body that was broken for us, Heavenly Father. We thank you for taking the sins of the world and putting them upon yourself so that we can live today. So today, Father God, we honor you. We love you. And we worship you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be worshipped. Amen? Amen. Amen and amen. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you all for being here this evening. Uh, just to let you guys know that on Sunday, we're going to have baptismals right after service. Okay? So if you haven't been baptized and the Lord's really been pressing on your heart, it's something that we do out of obedience to the Lord. Okay? So, so I really, really highly recommend... And say, if you haven't been baptized, just let us know so that way I know how many spray bottles to bring. That's a, that's a little, that's a little joke. Thank you, brother. Amen. So we'll have um, baptismals Sunday as soon as we finish service, okay? Right after service. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. Today's message, I titled it The Three Cups. We're going to learn of the three cups. Amen. And they're not the cups that you might be thinking of, you know, when we were out in the world. Not those cups. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. We're going to start in verse 39. Luke 22, starting in verse 39. In the Old Testament, the metaphor of the cup stands for human life, which can be filled with various things. 
The Bible says that Jesus allowed the Father to fill his cup with wrath and suffering so that you and I can drink from the cup of salvation. So, let's look at the cup of suffering. Let's go to Luke chapter 22, starting in verse 39. The word of the Lord says, Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Let's stop right there real quick. So this is showing you that Jesus really didn't want to die. He was, he was all God, and, but he was also human. He felt pain. He was asking his father, by any way this cup can pass me, please let it be so. But not my will, let your will be done. He was still about his father's will. He was still about his father's business. That's pretty deep. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. See, the meaning of this cup has been subject to intense debate. It is doubtful that Jesus referred to physical death because he had already decided to die for the sin of humanity. Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane reflected the awesome task before him. He was about to shoulder the sins of the world. He preserved through fear and faith to submit to God's sovereign will. He was preparing himself mentally, physically to, to put upon his back, upon his shoulders, yours and my sins and take him straight to the cross. He knew, he knew what he what was going to take place. He knew what he was going to go through and he had you in mind. Think about that. Let me tell you what changed my life. That story changed my life forever. I was probably, I was probably like those people that were whipping Jesus. And that's, that was me before. That was me. That's who I was. But when I found out that he did all this just for me, it changed me forever. And it can change all of you. He preserved through fear and faith to submit to the sovereign will of God. His absolute commitment to God is an example for us of prayer and perseverance. See, Jesus could have selfishly seized the privileges of of deity and avoided the cross. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 and 8 through 8. And this is just a cross-reference of what we read. Who, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. See, Jesus is calling us to surrender our lives, even if it causes our, our physical life. I think, I think the story of the cross, the story of, of Christ, of, of His death and resurrection and even His birth, I think we, we think of it as, as just fairy tales and stories and 
and all these things. We really haven't got behind the story and said, man, this took place for me. I'm going to preach tonight. Because I think we're at a point now that Jesus is trying to wake up the church and take us to another level. Not another level in luxuries, another level in prayer. But we're like the disciples, we're asleep. We're sleeping. We're sleeping when we're supposed to be seeking the will of God. We're sleeping when we're supposed to be seeking Him earnestly. We're sleeping. See, instead, He was willing to surrender to the will of His Father in heaven to accomplish the task set before Him. See, Jesus knew, but He felt pain like you and me. He felt that agony. He had that like, Oh man, he knew what he was going to have to endure. But we have to understand, church, that nobody took his life. He gave his life. Nobody killed him. But he submitted his soul to his father. And that's when he said, it is finished. That's the hope that you and me have. That's the hope that lies with the cross. You know what the cross signifies? The cross signifies death, that we must die to ourselves on a daily basis so that we can serve others. Amen. 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 Because if we're not not willing to die to ourselves, we're going to continue living a selfish life. There was no selfish in Jesus at all. Man, just think about it. These movies that they've made don't even bring no justice, nothing compared to what our Heavenly Father, our Lord, went through for us. For us. Now that is love. That is love. See, Jesus never promised us that we're going to have a perfect life. He never promised us that we were going to, that we were going to bypass the storm. He just said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. See, see, storms come and go, but the word of God always stays. The sun always comes up after a storm. Haven't you guys noticed that? Or after a windstorm, I should say. Now, right, the wind is like, man, I had a hair last week, and now it's gone. Can you imagine that one? Sorry. See, Jesus was willing to surrender his life. He could have said, I'm the son of God. I ain't going to give my life for nobody. He's like, I want a white horse. I want the best of everything. I want to live in that castle. I want to do this. But then again, us here on earth, we think that we're entitled to all these things. We think that, oh, Man, look at, he blessed me with a house with a hundred rooms. We only use one of them, but there's 99 more. Doesn't make any sense. See, Jesus is not our genie. He's not in a lamp and we just rub him and, and he just pops out whenever we in need. We need to, we need to praise him in the storm and we need to praise him when things are going good. We need to always praise him. Because of what took place today. Amen. See, one of my biggest storms happened a year and a half ago when I lost my father. That was probably one of the biggest things that I ever gone through. See, but Jesus brings a supernatural peace that I can't even explain to you. I was able to stand up here and give my father's services but see the hope that we have is that those that are in Christ will never die but they will continue to live our bodies fall apart I mean you wake up like we're just talking about age earlier it's like when you're young you want to be old when you're old you want to be young it's like we can't make up our mind you know what I'm saying (laughs) 
Sí. Although our, challenge, our challenges in life are not of this magnitude, there will be times when God calls us to do that seems to be more than we can face. We too need to surrender our wills and accept the will of our Father in heaven. God will help us bear the pain of dying to ourselves and will reward us with new life, with eternal life forever and ever. See, in the Old Testament, the cup refers to the wrath of God. In Psalm 75, 6 through 10, Psalm 75, 6 through 10, the word of the Lord says, For exaltation comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is fully mixed, and he pours it out. Surely it drags, drags, shall all the wicked of earth drain and drink down. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will also cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Amen. See, the psalmist understood that it was God who lifts up one person and humbles another. You know, we either humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, or He's going to humble us. Amen. In my case, He humbled me. He brought me down to my knees. I didn't even know that the floor, what the floor looked like until that, until that happened. His promise to punish the wicked is given first to warn people away from their evil and then to assure those who suffer at the hands of the wicked people that God hasn't forgotten them. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is with you till the end of the age. Then it is more likely Jesus prayed to be delivered from the punishment of separation from God. In Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 and 46, the word of the Lord says, Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama, sabachani. My wife says it better. That is my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? At that very moment was the only time he felt that separation from his father. When he was taking all of our sin upon himself. So that tells me that sin separates us from the Father. The sixth hour was noon. The darkness was not due to an eclipse of the sun since the Passover occurred at full moon. This was a supernatural occurrence. The physical darkness was a Demonstration of the agony of the Lord's human soul. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The duplication of my God, my God indicates Jesus' deep sorrow. So remember what took place on that day. He did it with you in mind. He did it with me in mind. Man, that is just so powerful. I mean, that can transform any heart. That can break through any wall. That can, I mean, because check this out. You know, we, we put up barriers between us. You know, growing up, we've been hurt. We've been mistreated. We've been lied to. We've been cheated on. We've been all these things. So we put up these barriers. 
which they're justified. We put up these walls around us. What happens when we put up those walls is that we don't let anybody pass those walls because this is our safe zone. But the thing about it is that we don't even let God pass those walls. And God is the only one that can bring healing. God is the only one that can bring forgiveness. God is the only one that can bring salvation to us. You know, we always use that scripture, while the Lord says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, you know, we want the Lord to go and strike them dead. But it doesn't work like that. We have to learn to forgive. Think of how much we've turned our backs on God. But then again, He was willing to forgive us. Now we think we're entitled to hold unforgiveness and not forgive others of the wrongs that they've done. But we want, we want to be in the glory with the Lord, right? We want God to forgive us of all of our mistakes. Amen. See, nevertheless, Jesus said, not his, but the will of his heavenly Father be accomplished. Luke says, an angel appeared and strengthened him afterwards. And then we have the cup of compromise. So many Christians, so many people that are followers of Christ, we compromise him. He's not the focal point. He's not the foundation of our life. He's not the foundation of of our being. See, how many of you have a, a structure where you live? Remove the foundation and tell me the house continues to stand. It's going to fall. When we don't lay the foundation on Christ our Lord, guess what? We're going to fall. It's not going to be able to stand. A house has to be strengthened by the, by the Word, by the Lord, and we have to set that foundation. Then, when the storms come, you know, the walls might, it's going to be like the little three pig story. You know, they go to the neighbor's house. Probably not a good analogy, but you guys get what I understand, what I'm saying, right? When the storm comes, it's not going to knock down your house. Because the storm will come. I wish I can tell you, man, give your life to the Lord, man. You're going to live your best life now. No, that's false. That's not what the Bible teaches. See, Jesus endured all this pain. He endured all this suffering so that me and you can have a life, so that we can have life. So I think that we need to make it a point to start to build our foundation upon the rock of our salvation, which is Christ our Lord. So we have the cup of compromise. Mark 15, 23. Mark 15, 23, the word of the Lord says, Then they gave him wine <clears throat> mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. Kind-hearted women provided sedation for condemned prisoners to drink just before they were executed. This potion of wine or vinegar mingled with myrrh was intended to numb the pain. Jesus refused it. It's like you're going into surgery and they're trying to give you anesthesia and you're like, no, I want it just raw. Just bring it like that. Just give it to me like that, right? Just cut me open like that with no medication, with nothing to numb your pain. Jesus was ready to take it all upon himself. All the pain. See, the first implication here is Jesus scorned the values of this world and the comforts of his body in order to carry out God's will with rigid and righteous discipline. I think discipline is something that we need to continue to work on. Right? Because it's hard for us 
to discipline ourselves. We say, okay, man, I'm going to start waking up early and I'm going to get in the Word. And we do it for one day and then we stop doing it. Because we start to compromise. Oh, well, man, I, I'm all tired all day. But let me tell you that when you put the Lord first of your day, your day is going to go by so much different than when you don't. Yeah, but we wake up early enough to make us our coffee and stuff before going to work, right? You don't need coffee to survive, but you need Jesus to survive. See, Jesus is life. Second, he expressed his resolve to fulfill the commitment that he had made in the garden, not mine, let your will be done. So Jesus was, throughout his whole ministry, throughout his whole life, he was always about the will of his Father. He was always about, uh, always about doing his Father's business. From birth all the way to, to Good Friday and Resurrection Day, he was always about doing the will of his Father. I believe that's why he was able to live a sinless life. Because he was always about the will of his Father and not his own. You know, because our mind plays tricks on us. We, we start thinking this and we start thinking that and we're like, man, they want me to be, they expect me to be in church twice a week. They're crazy. Now they're having an extra service on Good Friday. It's like, I'll just go Friday so I don't come Sunday. <laughs> See? So we're living, we're living a compromised life. Amen. We have to really devote ourselves to the Lord and say, Lord, from this day forward, I'm going to commit to you. Because I know that you're going to take care of my family. I know that you're going to take care of me. I know that you're going to take care of those around me. But I want to live for you with no compromise. Now we have the third cup, the cup of salvation. In Psalms 116, starting in verse 10 to 19, Psalms 116, 10 through 19. You know, when we were worshiping and I could hear everybody just singing there, man, it sounds so beautiful. I like wanted to record it and send it to Sony Records or something, you know? Maybe we can get some money for the kingdom, you know? So the word of the Lord says, I believe, therefore I spoke. I am greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What should I render to the Lord for, for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord. Now in the presence of all his people, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O oh Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, we could never repay God for what He's done for us. But we can show our gratitude, our appreciation, by fulfilling our promises to Him and by praising Him for restoring our lives. 
Did you know that before Christ, we were dead people? We're like dead people walking. But the Lord came and he breathed life into us. We could never repay him for what he's done for us. But we have this mentality that needs to change, that he owes us something. He, he doesn't owe us absolutely nothing. He already laid it all out at the cross. I tell my wife, I said, babe, I said, you know, if he's been so, the Lord has been so, so good to us. I said, but if I wouldn't receive any more, I mean, from him, I would be content. Why? Because he's already given me everything. He's given me my salvation. To know that I'll be in glory. I want my treasures in heaven, not here. Since Jesus accepted the cup, of, the cup of suffering and rejected the cup of compromise, we can drink from the cup of full of His saving grace. The content of the cup is called the living water, the same water Jesus offered to the woman at the well. Anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, to save him from his sins, drinks from this cup. This cup of salvation never runs dry. So then let's look a little bit at the application of this. So we have the cup of suffering. Separation from God is the ultimate penalty for our sins. Since Jesus suffered, man is not deprived from God's presence anymore. Tonight, if any of you wish to know God on a personal level, believe in His forgiveness, believe in His resurrection, believe in His death, believe in His birth, you have been born again and you will inherit eternity. I think more than anything, I envy my dad. I'm like, man, just, he knows what it's like to be in his glory right now. And then a couple of months before my father passed away, I had the privilege and the honor of baptizing him. One of my biggest, probably one of them, well, it's probably the most other than giving my life to the Lord and my restored marriage is, is baptizing my father. Hmm. See, Jesus didn't ask God to change the situation and God answered Jesus' prayer in a different manner. See, very often prayers are focused on changing the situation wh which isn't wrong. However, there are times that we must discern God's will in our situation and allow Him to change us instead so that God will be glorified Amen. through our situation. Amen. And then we had the cup of compromise. Every day we are presented with the options to compromise or obey God. Every second, every hour of the day, the enemy will throw things at us so that we can reject God, so that we can turn away from Him. Let me tell you something. If, 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 if everything's going to perfection, then we have to be worried. Because you're not a threat to the devil. And I'm not saying you have to go through all kinds of things. What I'm saying, though, is that you'll, you'll tend to know his tactics. See, because as believers, as followers of Christ, we're a threat. We're a threat to the devil. So he's going to do whatever he, 
He knows what you used to struggle with. He knows who you used to struggle with. He'll do whatever he can to bring this back in your life and put it back in your face. But we have to continue to stand on the truth of God and walk righteously. See, that's why we're here gathered here today because we have brothers and sisters so that we can fight this battle together. So that we can be here to encourage one another so that we can lift each other up. So that we can fight together. That's what family does, right? We fight together, right? I mean, I consider you guys family. If you guys don't consider me family, then that's you guys. But what I'm saying, though, is that, you know what? We need to come together and unite as one and say, devil, enough is enough. You're not having my children. You're not having my marriage. You're not having my life, period. Now is the perfect time to have an understanding of where we stand. You know, <clears throat> Easter and Christmas is probably when you get the most church attendance. Because that was me. I was one of those people. Easter, Christmas, weddings, quinceañeras, whatever, you know? Funerals. Until the Lord changed me. He changed my heart. And He can do the same for you tonight. See, we have two options. If we're not serving God, then who are we serving? If we're not on fire for the Lord, then what are we doing? Who are we on fire for? See, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. Plain and simple. He didn't say, I'm going to show you the way. He said, I am the way. That's a pretty bold statement for someone to make. He didn't say, I'm going to show you the truth. No, he said, I am the truth. He didn't say, I'm going to show you how to live your best life now. He said, I am life. And he is the only ticket that there is to heaven. Your religion's not going to get you there. Because you were raised in a Christian home, it's not going to get you there. Because we're both, each one of us is going to be held accountable. We have to, each one of us, make our decision. So what decision will you make? Only you know where you stand with the Lord. Only you know what's going on. Only you and God. But He wants to do something to you tonight. He wants to transform your heart. He wants to change your life. Amen. He wants to be your God. He wants to be your Redeemer. He wants, he wants to be allowed into your home. Amen. See, he's such a perfect gentleman. He's not going to force his way in. We have to invite him in. I remember that day like if it was yesterday. And my wife is my witness. I tell people, I, I share with people, 
part of my testimony, and they're like, no, this is, this is no way. And I love that, because that means that that Alfonso died, and no, no longer nobody can see him. That's what we want. We want the old of us to die. We don't want the old, the old us to come back. So I invite you this evening. I don't know your struggles. Only God does. But I do know the power in prayer. I do know when, when we're gathered together in prayer. What God can do. Because he's done it for us. So if you want to go ahead and just stand with me right now. <clears throat> if you've never repented of your sins. We must repent. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. It's near. It's around the corner. It's closer than it's ever been. We have to understand that church. I'm not trying to scare you or frighten you, but Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. He's on his way. So what decision are we going to make? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, right now we just come before your holy throne, Father. Father, I just thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for your word and for your truth, Father God. Father, I thank you, Heavenly Father, for each and everyone here this evening, Father God. You know their hearts, Father God. Your word says that, that you would draw all men unto yourself, Father God. But we have to turn from our wicked ways. We have to turn and repent. And we have to turn to you, Heavenly Father. Father God, that, that uh, no one would leave here today, Father God, without that assurance that if they were to die today, that they know without a shadow of a doubt, Father God, that they would be in glory with you. We can have that assurance today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we just thank you. We praise your holy word. We praise your holy name. Thank you, Father God, for what took place on this day. Thank you for giving your life on our behalf. Thank you for taking our punishment, Heavenly Father. Thank you for oh, taking upon yourself what we deserved. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, as we leave here today, Father God, I just pray that you would just transform our hearts, transform our minds, Heavenly Father. Give us your mind, Heavenly Father. Give us your heart. We want, we want to hate the things that you hate and love the things that you love, Father God. We want to be men and women, Father God, that, that serve you and that are proud witnesses of you, Heavenly Father. In humbleness, Father God, we just want to thank you, Father God, for taking all those lashes for us, Father God, those nails for us, Heavenly Father. So we thank you, Father God. As we leave here today, Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would just be with each and every one here, Heavenly Father, that you would get them to their destination safe. That you would protect them and their families, Father God, their children. Father, I just bless them right now, Father God, as they depart this evening, Father God. I just, 
I just pray that you would encourage them, Heavenly Father, as some of you might be might be going through some difficult times right now, but let me tell you that there's nothing impossible for God, but He just wants us to surrender. He wants us to surrender everything to Him and allow Him to fight our battles. So, Father, we just thank you. We praise you, Heavenly Father. And it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. We're glad that you tuned in. I pray and hope that the message that you just heard was a blessing to you. You know, the Word of God comes in and transforms our lives from the inside out. What an amazing opportunity. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Right now, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity right now, and I would be honored uh, to pray with you right now. If you've never given your life to Jesus, just repeat this prayer with me, and uh, believe in with all of your heart. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that we will be saved. And the Bible also says that everyone that calls out to the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right now, if you just repeat this prayer with me, say, Heavenly Father, I choose to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that you raised him from the dead to give me new life. So now, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I turn away from, from my wicked way of living. I turn my heart to you. From this day forward, I want to serve you. And I want to do everything that I can to be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just pray that prayer, Right now, I just want to welcome you into the kingdom of God, into his household. If you have a church, I, or you don't have a home church, get plugged into your home church, wherever you may be. If you're in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area, we would love to have you uh, join us for worship here at Majesty Worship Center. Our address is as follows, 3250 Coors Boulevard, Northwest, Suite B, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87121. We would love to meet you. We would love to, to fellowship with you. So I just pray that you would get plugged into the house of God. God bless you, and thank you for watching.